actually we should bring back repressive tolerance because they only give you two options, which is repressive tolerance is bad, therefore liberal tolerance is good, therefore twerking in front of children is fine and twerking in front of uh, kids is even better. And then if we can chop their dicks off, even better. And if we can make them commit suicide after giving them loads of drugs, even better. And if we can hold you down while we put vaccines in your arm, even better. I think we should bring back repressive tolerance, actually. Yeah, and we I have think to we should stop being tolerant of their evil. Absolutely, 100%. And that's not to say we can't win hearts and minds, but we win hearts and minds by being good and doing the good thing, not by letting them do evil all the time. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fox and Father, where I have now managed to get into my studio, but I just can't get the cameras working because there's no internet. But my name is Lawrence and I'm the Fox, and this is Calvin and he's the... Father. You are, which is why it's called Fox and Father, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. I'm liking your swanky new set. Look at you with all your modern LED lights and whatnot. I, I'm so annoyed that you can't see it with the actual cameras because it, well, with that it's all beautiful. I've got, I've got so many nice things. I saw it on Twitter. It looks fantastic. Look, I've been, I've got, I'm on. A, I don't have a camera, but I've got smartphones. I've been playing around with this stuff. Look at that. <laughs> oh I'm mate, on, I've got angles going on. <laughs> you can do it. I, what is that? Two smartphones. Yeah, I've got a smartphone over there. Oh, I like it. <laughs> You look very, very handsome. I'd be, I'd be playing Please. the same tricks if I could. But next week we will have it, um, we will have it up and running uh, cool. properly. So tell me some. Let me just put this on Do Not Disturb because that's the standard form. Um, so tell me, it's 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 a week on almost since uh, yeah. Amer America turned its back on communism and Satanism <laughs> and. Um, how do you feel about that? Amazing. I'm a cloud nine out here. It's just so optimistic. Everyone's so happy. Well, not everyone. There's still, there are some miserable <laughs> people out there. Um, Kid Rock put out a nice video today saying, we won, but don't gloat. I was like, that's a nice positive message, but I feel like gloating right now. <laughs> there is, we did there win. Is, we won so much. We this won is, so it, much. It, like it could have gone either way and we've gone down the good part. This is the good timeline. Like the stock markets are, are doing great. Bitcoin's doing great. People are feeling it straight away. The, uh, the, the positive uh, positivity of prosperity. And so, I mean, we've still got until 20th of January till it gets installed that we'll see what he does in this. I mean, even before those first hundred days already RFK junior has put out a video of all the nasty stuff in American foods that he wants to ban. We've got Trump saying CRT and, uh, no, what was it? Gender theory, done. No more transing children. Like, straight away, they're fixing the country with common sense. It's wonderful. It's a total attack on, on the evil of it. I was sort of thinking about why is Trump so successful? And um, I've come to the conclusion it's because he's not a politician. He's mm. a person who's spent his life around people, and he really loves people. So he's not well, a politician, his team, right? Like he's got yeah. the richest man in the, in the world on his team. He, he himself is a multi-billionaire. Like they're not, they're the only ones who aren't in it for the money. Every other politician goes into office and when they leave the presidency, they're millions of pounds, millions of dollars richer than they were when they went in. Trump's the only one that lost money. He's there for, because he loves his country. And he's built like this A-team. Like Elon Musk has changed the world by buying Twitter and giving us free speech, giving us making us the media. This is the first election where the media has not managed to manipulate people. And they are, they are so upset because they're, they're, they're asking questions like, how did they not vote how we wanted them to vote? Like the, the audience are clearly not listening to what we're saying. Yes, exactly. We're done with the legacy media now. It's finished. We are the media. It's, we it's are. Wonderful. How important, you know, when you hear people who go, Twitter's not the real world, etc., and then you get Bill Ackman who says that, um, Twitter, you're right, Twitter isn't the real world. The, the world is now divided into two worlds, which is the, the legacy dying media world, where people believe the crap that they're told by, you know, Piers Morgan or whoever. And then you get the new media world of the Joe Rogans and the long form podcasts. And how much do you think that uh, affected? Do, do you oh, think that, 
You, you, like, I, just I think you did. Donald Trump and um, JD Vance both had long form interviews with Joe Rogan, who is the biggest media person in the world. His podcast is massive. And they both just sat down there for three hours and just talked about everything and answered questions. And, you know, JD Vance was so on it. He, had, he was brilliant at answering every question. But I mean, even the president just sitting there and having a conversation. Kamala Harris would never dream of doing that. I mean, she couldn't do that because she, she didn't have the capacity to do that. But yeah, they, the new media, as in the, the, the outlets like Joe Rogan, fantastic. But when I say we are the media, I don't even mean you and I. I mean, all of us, everyone on Twitter, we are the media now. We share information with each other. We find out what's going on because we, are the new, we share the news. It's, it's kind of gone um, crowdsourced. It's gone peer-to-peer. Yeah, it, it, it's completely, I, I certainly think that you're right in the fact that this is the legacy media will not pay, play any part in any future election ever in any country, possibly a bit more in Britain, because we still love the BBC and that corrupt organisation that's destroyed. But it, well, also it's fascinating. Celebrities. Uh, no one cares what celebrities think or say anymore. All of the dodgy yeah. you know, P. Diddy's came out to protect themselves and said, vote for Kamala, all of them including Taylor Swift, they all got ignored. It's amazing. Yeah, the big, she's got one of the biggest accounts on X as well. And it's almost, I wonder, in my more hopeful times, because obviously we've had this conversation before and I go, I go back and forth over going, I feel really sad that I don't, I'm not acting at the moment or, or possibly anymore. But I feel that the way that I'm instantly salved there's a salve on that wound is that i go i wouldn't want to hang out with these bastards anyway they're so behind the times they're not relevant they're not brave filmmakers and and people like that you know you think back to the john houston's and you know even clint eastwood now yeah, these filmmakers just make great films that's what they do and they've they've stopped there was a really interesting um thing by matt damon actually who said that the reason why films are dreadful, so this is sort of second iteration effect of, of, of the, it, the technological revolution, this fourth industrial revolution that we're going through. He said that the reason no one makes decent films anymore is because there are no DVDs. So you would put up a certain amount of money to front a movie, you know, and we're talking independent movies, so anything up to between five and $25 million which would be classed as an independent movie, they would then put the money up. And then what would happen was that um, they would know that they would get a second tranche of the money after the weekend, uh, after the, sorry, after the theatrical release when the DVD came out. But now movies have to make all of the money straight away. So what you get is like Marvel or Disney and all of the great actors go and do these Marvel and Disney. Love the fact that the Hemsworth boy didn't join the Avengers Kamala Fon, by the way. That's a great sign. Just that's a side note. But what, is what that, you know is that true though? Because they yeah, they have the theatre release, but then they also have the streaming release, surely. Um it, well it's the same thing essentially, because they're buying it. The streamer is buying it and it's not selling it. It's selling it via subscription. Anyway, he says the model is, it, the model is, what, is what broke it. Okay. So there are second and third iteration effects on this. So um, Trump is a human being. Vance is a human being. Joe Rogan would talk to either of them about anything. He doesn't really want to necessarily, I get the sense, talk to them about politics or what their no, policies I'm, are. I'm not a massive fan of the Joe Rogan podcast. Like, I don't listen to it generally. I, I've watched it for these two episodes in particular because it's a big deal. But his, the thing I don't like about his podcast, and I, I, all the time I respect for him, he's, he does amazing at what he does. But the thing I don't like about it is it's so sporadic and it's like scat. He's like, he's, he's like from football to, to immigration. to It's like all over the place. I can't deal with it. It's, it sends me crazy. I want, I want, I want someone who's like, I want Julia Hartley Brewer to sit down with J.D. Vance and like really hammer them at the fine details of policy. That's not what Joe Rogan does. Fine, that's not his thing. But the, the, what was the point I was making there? Oh, just that the, both Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance were able to sit down and do that and go on to talking about their family one minute to talking about gas the next. And that's, you know, that's quite something for the top caliber of politicians to be put through. So how much do you think it's about uh, for the people that are voting? Let, let's assume, let's make the assumption that Twitter is the alternative universe and that Musk has completely saved free speech for the West. 
why is it do you think that people just want to know what whether the person is authentic because i think what trump's qualities are he's authentic he's consistent he's incredibly sensitive and he's very passionately patriotic as a human being so he takes an attack on himself as an, as an attack on america or an attack on america as an attack on himself you know so are we witnessing the return of people looking at the content of one's character rather than the ticking off of the diversity boxes which is what the bbc yeah. and all the legacy dying media do i think people just yeah people just wanted some positivity he's got a plan he's got hope he's got optimism for the future he loves the country he wants to make it better again the whole motto is make america great again that's a good thing and the other the other side were fighting for death they they pretty much centered the the um election around abortion which is like we want the right to kill people that's not a positive message um you know i, I got criticized before the campaign for my doing my little ymca dance now everyone's doing it everyone is doing the ymca because trump is doing the ymca it's like the thing that's it's bringing people together in positivity hope love joy like they tried to sell joy as their message but they had no real joy his joy is authentic he's, he's happy because he loves this country it's a good thing it's interesting that they know that joy and hope and optimism are, you know, the Barack Obama, yes, we can destroy America, which is what he did. That They know that joy sells, but they're not joyful people. So they pick a, so Kamala Harris, I'm going to call her Kamala now because fuck her. Sorry to swear, but it's like, I'm sick of being told how to pronounce someone's name. It's like me walking up to people and thinking, Lawrence, with a U, you? you know, it's like, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just not interested in people being permanently offended by the way people mispronounce things. Um, we've got, we've now got, uh, you know, th this idea that they, they punched out this message of joy and hope and optimism and all that sort of stuff. But they went for the 10% lunatic um, policy platform, which was let's uh, give trans whatever vaginoplasties ugh, to... Um, immigrants and let's um and let's carry on chopping off children's dicks and encourage the murder of the unborn and it's like at what point did you think that that was going to sell to the american people and how amazing are the american people to turn around and go Mate, to the whole thing of the election results is fantastic. The whole country is red. When you look at it by county by county or city by city, you can see the whole country is red. There are a few little blue bobs, blobs where the major cities are, but of course the major cities are a problem anyway, as all major cities are. But when you correlate that, that map of the United States election results against homicide rates, and you see actually there's a direct correlation between those two maps of all the major cities are the places with, where the major homicides take place. You see that the, the Democrats, the, the liberals, the Marxists are the ideology of death. It is a death cult, quite literally. They promote the idea of death in their elections and they live death through their day to day lives, just killing each other off, whether it's abortion or stabbing or shooting. This is not good. And so I think the rest of the country has kind of decided against it. Even where I am in Michigan, Michigan has turned red. It's amazing. Everywhere is red. I know. Red pilled. Michigan, Michigan has gone red. That is incredible. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't know enough about, you know, the, the ins and outs of American politics, but I know that Michigan is not, wasn't particularly a, def, definitely wasn't a red state as a given. And the swing states were. What do you make of um, the graciousness or the faux graciousness? Because I think it's faux of the losing side, the way that they, they both Obama and Kamala, have come out and been very gracious. Do you think that's a uh, preempting well, some? That's what they're supposed to do, right? And I mean, Kamala was gone for ages, for for hours. No one saw her. It's very weird. She took too long to come out and concede publicly. Although I understand she did, she did phone the president elect, which is good. But that was funny when, when she came out to do her speech and uh, Peanut reincarnated ran across the stage. Like you literally can't write these. If this was a movie, you'd say you can't write that. That's too on the nose. Like the time, we're in the best timeline right now. A little squirrel runs across after one of the whole messages of the campaign was that they are the death cult and they go into your house and you can't stop them. They can, they can kill your pets. There's nothing you can do about it. This is the bureaucracy of the Democrats. And then she comes out to concede and the squirrel runs across. Fantastic moment. 
uh, rip peanuts and rip Fred was, was the message. I yeah, she conceded and her message was fight constantly. She kept saying fight, which, I mean, if that was the right that were doing that, if that was Trump that conceded and kept saying something about fighting, she would have said that he's uh, inciting violence. He's not properly conceding. But of course, they, they are hypocrites, aren't they? They are, which I find, I, I was having a conversation with my friend Jeffrey um, yesterday about yeah. the Trump takedown of the whole of America. You know, like he literally just went and America went with him. Uh, the, oh, we uh, note to ourselves, we need to talk about those 20 million extra votes that Biden apparently got in 2020. Crazy. Um, yeah. But I was speaking to Jeffrey yesterday and Jeffrey said to me, um, you know, because I've always maintained that the strategy to deal with these evil, satanic little bastards is either to be incredibly vicious and rude to them or to mock them mercilessly. That's been my approach. And all of the advice I've been given, including by my friend Jeffrey, uh, has been, you know, well, maybe, you know, maybe it is time to sort of put a suit on and put a, put a nicer face to this to this thing that you're so passionate about. And the interesting thing that Jeffrey said was he said, maybe you went in too, you were too keen to talk about free speech because free speech is actually irrational, uh, a, sorry, irrational rather than irrational. It's a rational argument that you're trying to have with irrational people. And actually to speak to irrational people, you've got to speak emotively to them, which is what Trump does because he's sensitive. And I was interested to go, actually, I feel a little bit, not. it's not a personal thing, but I think the, the idea of the rebellion is that um, the MAGA movement is exactly re replicatory, that word, re replicates the woke movement, which is it's not a political movement, it's a cultural movement. It en encompasses everything. So it applies common sense, rationality, and reason to any situation. Shall we chop a child's dick off? No, bad idea, don't do that. Shall we immiserate the whole population and freeze grannies to death to worship the sun god? No, don't do that, that's a silly idea. Shall we um, import millions and millions of people who hate us and want to kill us? No, let's not do that. It's very commonsensical, and therefore it's a very powerful movement in response to the it, this I feel literally, uh, I think you have to say graped. I feel graped by wokeism. I feel like it is taken so much out of me having to argue why twerking in front of children is a bad idea. You know, you and I have done this. We've been out, we've, we've sat and, and stood and we've looked. Yeah, I got fired from the board. Demons. I got fired from the board of Royal Academy of Dance for saying adults shouldn't be twerking in front of children, for goodness sake. We need to shut the, but the, so just to take that on, we need to shut these fuckers down. Sorry, swear again. But they, the Royal Academy of Dance needs to be utterly removed or replaced You're right, with, right. With, a, with a. This is a movement. Movement. This is building momentum. And it, you're right, it is cultural. It's bigger than rationality. It's bigger than logic and politics. This is probably why it's so, it feels so good. Like I've been on high all week riding that wave, not just because we won. And it's, it's, it's not just like when a sports team wins or your polit political team wins. I've felt that before. This is different. This feels like a turning of the tide. And actually, I think you're right in that we have to go hardcore this time around. For every single time we've played nice and we've, we've given too much grace. Too much grace is not a good thing. Like we have to have truth and grace. And so we have to kind of we, of course, we always have to be forgiving, and I keep saying this, but, but forgiveness follows repentance. And, but the left, the Marxists, the, the, the kind of liberals are not repentant, and they are waiting. They're biding their time until they can get back in power and own us. They want to eradicate us and our way of life and everything that we believe in to be good, true, and beautiful. They want to destroy us and destroy it all. And so we can't just be in management mode. We can't do what the conservative government did for 14 years and just just sit around and do it. We've got to double down. We've got to completely eradicate woke culture from academia, from schools, from workplaces, HR, everything. It's got to go. Transing of children has got to be outlawed. You've got to undo the mass abortion across the country. Like, we've got to come down on all of this, clamp down on the blue-haired, nasty people because they were clamped down on us. And we've played nice for too long. Now's not the time to play nice. Donald Trump and his 
A team need to smack down all these fools for what they are. I completely agree with that sentiment. Do you, um, I was listening to, I, I, I got really into this Marcuse thing of repressive tolerance, which is the idea uh, to explain it to people who don't know, because I didn't know, so I'm just going to explain it, is that Marcuse said, I think it's Marcuse, if I'm wrong, sorry, uh, but it's one of those sort of 1940s loonies, um, that the whole society that we live in is a repressive tolerant society. So what we do is we repress liberal tolerance with um, ideas like timeliness, all the stuff that BLM and all those people go on about, you know, like good manners, you know, it, protecting your habitat rather than counting carbon credits, all that sort of stuff. And I was sort of, I was really fascinated and I thought, actually, we should bring back repressive tolerance because they only give you two options, which is repressive tolerance is bad. Therefore, liberal tolerance is good. Therefore, twerking in front of children is fine and twerking in front of uh, kids is even better. And then if we can chop their dicks off, even better. And if we can make them commit suicide after giving them loads of drugs, even better. And if we can hold you down while we put vaccines in your arm, even better. I think we should bring back repressive tolerance, actually. Yeah, and we I have to we stop should... being tolerant of their evil. Absolutely, 100%. And that's not to say we can't win hearts and minds, but we win hearts and minds by being good and doing the good thing, not by letting them do evil all the time. Yeah. I, 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 want, to, I want to see a world, I want the UK to become a world where we make people feel in exactly the same way as when you visit the Arab world. I want people to feel very uncomfortable in the same way as if you went to Morocco, as I've told you many times before when I went with my ex-wife and she decided to wear a very short pair of shorts and I said, probably not a good idea here, darling, but she ignored me as she frequently did. Um, and the looks and the ho and it, to the point where we had to get, we had to escape from the souk in in marrakesh because of the looks i want that to be this country i want uh, when people walk part down the road in bin bags i want people to say no we do not tolerate this you are not to cover your face you're not we do not want you in bin bags and we do not want and we will not tolerate mass gatherings mass religious gatherings in uh, in worship of a Satanist ideology in front of my children, uh, in front of my people. And that's where my sort of civic nationalism yeah. comes in, as opposed to the ethno-nationalism. It's like, yeah, you've got, I don't well, give a shit. If you walk down the street with the pride parade and they're gyrating and you've got your child holding your hand, you've got to say, t tell them to stop gyrating. They've got to go take that somewhere else. And that's not okay. Absolutely, we can't we can't just tolerate it or even celebrate it and encourage it. Like, oh, there aren't we progressive? No, we've got to stop being progressive. Absolutely right. But we are progressive. That's the thing. And I know that you and I would disagree about this thing, which is that I think it is good that we have uh, we have tolerated homosexuality. I think it was really bad that what we've done is we've gone get married. I think that was the worst thing. And I think all of the evils and sins that have come from this movement have come from uh, the confidence that these people have got from saying, well, we're exactly the same as you. No, marriage is between a man and a woman. It's not between two men. If you choose behind closed doors, do whatever you want to do, that's fine by me. I don't know how you would feel about it, but it's fine by me. I'm not interested in who someone shags. I don't care. I genuinely don't care in the same way as I don't care about what colour someone's skin is. But the minute you impinge and you see what Welby has now been associated with today of like moving around these horrible people through the Church of England. And you're just like, I want to live in a country where I am able to celebrate the values of my country. And one of the values of my country is we look each other dead in the eye. That's what we do. So I want to, I want London, I was in London and I, I just so sad to see what happened to London. And it seems to, maybe it's because I live here now and it's, and it's more heightened, but I'm appalled by London. I'm appalled by this, you know, Sadiq Khan's sneaky little thing of like London's for everyone. No, it's not for Jews. It's not for Jews, Sadiq Khan. And it's not for white people either. So, you know, 
take your diversity. I want to, what I want to do, I think waking up from this, this woke hell shithole that Trump has managed to break a hole in, is I want to wage war on these people. Like all out war, repressive mm. intolerance, which is to say, you're not to do that. You're not, I am the yeah. parent. Like, you they know, become the very thing they've, they've accused us of all these years. They say we're intolerant. Yeah. It's time to be intolerant. Absolutely. What do you yeah. do it? <laughs> what? Well, you're 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 sort of happier because I I'm also I I love to think what our friends will think. It's like I remember having conversations and people were like you know Calvin's going to America. Why is he going to America? And I'm like because he called, he's called to go to America. And now that you're there, I imagine all of our chums are sat there going, God, I wish I was with Calvin. It was so good, honestly. We had. Him. So Callum was over here, as you saw last episode, and we went to, um, there was a rally out in Michigan, and then he went off to to the border to do, to do his investigative journalism, and then my friend Amir came over, and we went to the last Trump rally, which was here in Grand Rapids, as it happened. I mean, what are the chances? Uh, I come out to the place where it, where it happens to be. Um, I mean, it was fantastic. We had, we were there from maybe about 7 p.m., and Trump wasn't on stage until midnight, and he didn't finish talking until it must have been half two in the morning. Uh, and <laughs> we, had, we had a little uh, backstage tour as well, which was f fantastic. But it was just no one cared. Everyone was up late, and we were all, you know singing along. And they, I mean, they start the event with a prayer, and then they have the pledge of allegiance to the flag, and then they have the national anthem. It's just so patriotic. And I, I was standing there thinking, you know, I probably see this once a year in the UK in the Royal Albert Hall for the proms, like last night the proms or something, but I, I wouldn't see this at a political, I've never seen this at a political event. I've never seen, you know, the amount of Boris Johnson rallies that I've been to over the years and stuff like that, they wouldn't dream of doing this kind of stuff because it's just too much for Brits. Like over here, they love being proud of their country, their patriots and Christians. It's, it's so refreshing. You know, it gives you shivers down your spine, just the whole room in celebration of our Lord together and then in celebration of the country together. It's like, that's before anything even happens. But yeah, he, he gave a, a very lively rally for his last rally. I don't know seriously how he gets the energy. He'd been to four rallies that day. And then, um, and then we some, bit, some, people are just, some people are just called to that stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, the man lives it's... off off saturated fat and sugar. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's genetic. And concept. he's... He never <laughs> stops. It's, epi it's, it's epigenetic. He's, he's, he's amazing. Um, well, that's good. Oh, my Lord. We've done like an entire section of A Fox and Father, which isn't sad. Because <laughs> there's nothing to be sad about anymore. We're winning. We're finally winning. I, I put out that tweet, you know, I said after like five years of what? Lockdowns and forced medical interventions and just misery after misery after misery. Like we're finally turning the tide and, and we are taking back control. And this is fantastic. I could not be happier. It's, it's wonderful. What would you say to the conspiracy theorists, the um, those further down the rabbit hole than you and I, who yeah. would go, well, Operation Warp Speed was part of Trump's agenda. And w would you say that these people are also on borrowed time, the, the kind of the woke right where nothing is pure enough? Uh, in no, I feel sorry for these people because they've been taken in by like everything's a lie because they've, they've seen so many lies that everything has to be a lie. It's like you can't live your life that way. Um, you know, yeah, he was part of trying to come up with a solution. Like we were all taken in by it. If his first administration was bad, he was surrounded by so many bad people giving bad advice. And, you know, I was taken in by it at the beginning. It, I didn't instantly say, no, this is all bad. Like some people were great, good for them who were, who were awake from the beginning. But a lot of us had to be woken up, including the president. And uh, I think we'll, what we'll see is Anthony Fauci must be on the run. Because when Bobby Kennedy Jr. gets in office, we're going to see some uh, retribution. And it worked with Millet in Argentina, and it's going to work in America. He, they are going to. They're, they're, they said that they didn't know. Like if you ask ChatGPT how many federal agencies they are, they they they've no idea. But they they're basically forming a federal agency or two every single year. And Musk is going to completely shred that. I can't and. Wait. I mean, but these, I, these I, world right people, they're, they're insane. Like every now and get, again, there's one, I can't remember his name. There's one in particular that finds a photograph of me and you with masks on in church. 
And I was like, that's literally the only way we could get to church at that point. You had to put a face mask. Like, we hate those face masks. We made a big deal campaigning against them and, and throwing them and burning them and stuff. But we wore them that one time, I think, in our church because we're, what were we doing? I can't even remember. But they put it up. No, we they were, were doing, part of we it. Were doing These a... people, they're Puritans and they're insane. Yeah, I think right wing Puritanism is a really, really bad thing. And I'm noticing it on the rise, as we've discussed before, that there is, um, you know, unless you are completely perfect by them, then you are, you're a faker and you're a wrong un. And actually, yeah. I think we'll be vindicated in the position of just adopting a very stable and consistent message. Um, can I You've got to give room for you... change. If, you, if you're the first to wake up, you've got to give room for other people to wake up too. And that's something we all need to be able to do. Like this is part of this movement right now. We are awake to the evil of abortion. We're awake to the evil of transing children and all that stuff. And not everyone is yet. But so we've got to show them the way. And when they come around, we've got to welcome them. We can't say, no, you were, you were wanting to trans kids five minutes ago. Like, we can't push them. We've got to say, come, help us join the fight to stop others from transing kids. You know what I mean? Even those that cancelled us. Even So if GB News turned around and said, you know what, Calvin, we were wrong. And, you know, you're now, you know, a really important figure elsewhere and we would love you to do a show for GB News would you say to them yeah or would you say well if you repent then yes or would you just say no thank you never you've got it right there I mean I'm not that's that's a I'm not interested in that but I mean if people are joining the fight yes they have to repent of course we have to hold our hands up and say I was wrong about that but now I'm here and now I'm part of the fight so yeah and then the other side has to forgive repentance and forgiveness fantastic so but, we've seen we've seen also the first prime minister's questions of Kenny Badnock's uh, leadership of the Conservative Party, right. where she asked David Lammy to apologise for being an idiot, fucking moron, student politician, uh, when he was talking about Trump being KKK and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And L Lammy's not deleted that tweet, and she asked for an apology from Starmer, yeah. and Starmer went. He or he went into sort of utopian meltdown mode where he went, we're fixing the foundations of Britain. I'm like, no, the foundations of, of Britain are really, really solid. You are destroying the foundations of Britain. That's what you're doing. So do you, what, what, what is your take on Kenny Baybrook? Ba right. And do, do you think that she's, she's got the gumption? Can, can she be encouraged to trump it up a bit? So Kemi has always been fantastic at speaking. She's good at rhetoric. She's good at the dispatch box. She'll be great there. Fantastic. Um, and she was right. Lamy should be forced to apologise or the Prime Minister should apologise on his behalf. Neither of them have. Uh, Angela Rayner is another one. I mean, Angela Rayner and David Lamy are, you know, that's so low IQ. I don't know how they're in Parliament in the first place. But they should be both forced to apologise. And actually, you know, J J.D. Vance had to take, the Vice President-elect had to take a call from Angela Rayner and... At some point, they're going to have to have conversations. I think the president-elect has had a conversation with David Lammy. They should refuse, actually, until they get an apology. Should, they should outright... Again, they're showing too much grace. They, they're too nice. They should say, no, you, you said I'm a tyrant, a psychopath, a, a neo-Nazi or something. No, I'm not going to meet you. And then the UK should be humbled. The, our, our politicians, our ministers should humble themselves and apologise um, to the leader of the free world and his vice presidents. I think it would be great if... Um... If, if Trump really, really went hard on on this Labour government and he said, yeah. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to speak to your stupid DEI hire, David Lammy, who, who as you say, he's a, he's a moron. Yeah. He's a moron. There, there, there's no other way of doing it. And uh, that sort of makes me wonder whether in order to be part of the political class, you have to be a moron, whether that's sort of one of the prerequisites no, no, no. like David Cameron's a smart man. Boris Johnson's a smart man. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, smart. You know, there are lots of smart people there. But uh, the, and in the past, to, they're even smarter. To be, to be one of to be one of note now in the diversity of our strength world, David Lammy ticks all the boxes for the legacy media. You know, that's sure. what he does. And I, oh, I think he's by the way. 
the, the UK media, the meltdown they had, Emily Maitlis storming out, swearing, and <laughs> they, none of them could handle it. Um, Rory Stewart, who used to call himself a conservative, I, I was wrong, but I'm not, I wasn't fundamentally wrong. You were wrong. Just admit well, you were I've, wrong. I've got a, Someone thinks like you. I've got, a, I've got a theory on this, which is that if you don't subscribe to the biblical message, which is that you are fallen, and we were fallen from the first days, almost, that you somehow think that you're fundamentally a good person, and therefore that somebody else who disagrees with you is fundamentally a bad person. Yeah. So those people that don't have a conscience uh, innately, we, we, the, the gift of the scripture is to say you can have a conscience because you can think of yourself as not being the right person. Whereas Rory Stewart cannot understand why everyone doesn't agree with Rory Stewart. And therefore he turns around, as all of these leftist meltdowns have done, mm. God forbid this man was in the Conservative Party, I can't believe mm. him, I was interviewed by him once, and he's a... He, he's a He's one of those people you just don't want to be close to. He's got that very vibe. Well, he's hanging around with Alistair person. Campbell, a literal war criminal. It's insane. But yeah. I think you're right. They're just not in touch with their conscience. We all have a conscience, but they're not in touch with it. And you're right. They're, they're centered on their own foundation. They make gods of themselves. They think they are good people. So therefore, everyone who disagrees with them must be bad. You're right, 100%. Um, it's, it's, it was weird to watch someone like Rory Stewart, who's a very clever man, not be able to see how wrong he was and why he was wrong, but the rest of the world must be wrong. It's like the, uh, was it the CNN guy or someone said, you know, I, I just read an article, a headline in CNN saying how are we wrong, but I'm not even going to read it because no, we weren't wrong. The voters were wrong. Like they're literally the meme. They, they are crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, kind of ter- it's kind of terrifying, which is why it's kind of so wonderful that we now have the complete opposite, which is which is um, the manifestation of, of living hope, which I, I think it's, I, I genuinely, uh, it is hyperbolic to say it, but I think it is the, the most important, Tuesday was the most important chapter, other than the founding of America, it was the most important chapter in the preservation of the West. Uh, in well, President Donald J. West. Trump, President Donald J. Trump is going to celebrate 250 years of America. He's going to set up an anniversary event, you know, like the like the World Fair. It's going to be fantastic, a positive celebration of of one of the most powerful or influential countries in the world. A, a Kamala Harris presidency would have been the deterioration and the end of how of what we know America to be today. Like it was really a turning point that we've just. I don't think people. Are, I don't think everyone appreciates how close we came to the end of the West as we know it. This we had. We now have a chance to save the West, but this is just the start. Like the fight begins now, and D- Donald Trump's got two years really until the midterms to get into action and put everything into place that he needs to put into place, and then he's got another two years to set up for a JD Vance presidency. Because this is it. <laughs> this is make or break time, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just can't see a way back. If they bring in some proper voter ID laws, I can't see a way right. back for the left. So let's get on to the 20 million missing votes. Well, that's the thing. Before the 20 million, you just mentioned voter ID. Kamala did not win in a single county that didn't have voter ID. She uh, yeah. uh, did have voter ID. So she only won in places that did not have voter ID. She only won in places where it was possible for the Democrats to cheat. And again, she didn't outperform Joe Biden in a single place. That's outstanding. But you're right. So these these 22 million extra votes last time around, where's that come from? Every single election, pretty much, the Democrats have been hovering around 60 million. And it's whether, it's whether the Republicans get fewer or more votes than them, which determines who wins, right? And so last time around, they managed to get up to 80 odd million. Where from? Where, they gone? Where are those extra voters gone? Well, I, I, I can't come to any, any rational, logical conclusion other than to say that the 2020 election was absolutely rigged. That's my view. Yeah. It was and a fraud. They it, was, it, it, it was rigged to the tune of 20 million people. Yeah. That's how scared they were, and that's how much they wanted to bring in their new um, orthodoxy, which has just yeah. not stuck with anyone and and therefore it almost makes it better 
because you would think that the Democrats would turn around and go, we want an investigation into electoral fraud in 2020 so that we can find out whether Trump is an, is a uh, illegitimate president because he won twice already. So this is his third term. This is third term. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's Barack that, Obama had four terms. It's that. It? Barry. Well, yeah, I mean, but, but Barack Obama, I, I think Barack Obama is probably one of the most evil men ever to set you know, set up his stall in politics because he's so articulate. And the snake, when you meet the snake and you see a demon up close and, you know, you've seen them because you stick your neck out on the line and I've certainly seen them as well, is that when you see a pure, pure demon, you know exactly what you're dealing with. And I think Barack Obama is possibly one of the most evil people on the planet. But like owing no... Uh, yeah, I'm bet, but owing mostly to the fact that he has a huge amount of power. So I don't, evil people are fine by me. I can deal with evil people, but evil people with power is a terrible yeah. thing. But then power is a terrible thing too. Um, but on tell the, on me the about of, um, of, uh, cheating. Sorry. Where I am in Michigan, the last in the 2020 election, there were, tw there were 17 precincts where me more people voted than were registered to vote. Like they, they somehow found more people in 17 precincts. And this is the same place where they were boarding, boarding up the windows so, and they wouldn't let the watchers inside. And so no one was observing the count. And then, so I think, it's, I think it's safe to say now that they cheated in the last election. And that's been a conspiracy theory for so long now, but it's another one that's been proven true. You just have to add it. You just have to add so that YouTube don't destroy us that it's in your opinion. You Everything I say is my opinion. opinion. <laughs> I know. Ali will put this on the screen for us. Today... Why do they have Christmas markets already? Today, yeah, exactly. Today we welcome the return of Manchester Christmas markets. You will likely see a heightened police presence who will be acting to keep you all safe. If you see something suspicious, please report it by, by speaking to them. Really? I wouldn't do that. Or calling 101. Always call 999 in an emergency. Pictures of police with guns. Who are they keeping safe in Manchester, Cal? Who are they protecting? Probably the Muzzies. Muzzies? I thought you called them probably. Mohammedans. They are probably there to keep the Mohammedans safe from everyone else. To keep the religion of peace safe from the far-right extremists. Is that what you're trying to offer yeah. me? Yeah. Um, but of course, in, in reality, the, the only reason they're ne needed is because... Mohammedanism is rampant and people are dying because of it. And we've seen last night in in Amsterdam with an Israeli team playing in the, I think it's the Europa League, I'm, I'm fairly sure, Maccabi Haifa, I think they're called, were playing uh, one of the Ajax or PSV or someone like that. And um, the Mohammedans were going around the streets interrogating people as to whether they were Jewish and then beating them violently if they were. Is, is it time on the back of this election win and on, and on the back of a return to common sense, is it time to say that we absolutely have nothing in common with Islam and Islam needs to be surgically removed from the West? And that needs to be, that needs to be done. I mean, you'll know more about this. Well, it's, Sorry. it's never going to be done in Britain, but yeah, Donald Trump could do it here. Absolutely. The president should start that straight away. Saying that there's no there's no place for Islam in in uh, civilized society. Well, Jenrick Jenrick is saying a lot. You know, G G Jenrick is right. G Jenrick is. What does it matter what a backbencher says? Well, it did he it, opposition backbencher? Yeah. Well, you know, Farage has never didn't get into parliament until this year. Farage's chairman is a Mohammedan. I know. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say is that. Um, you, it doesn't really matter that you're a, a, a politician, be a backbench MP. If you're saying the things that people want to hear, you are steering the course of your party towards its future. And my, my, that's what I believe. My hope and faith has always been that the Conservatives would find a Trump to, to come and, and push back against the idiot Starmer. And I think I do think that's the most likely outcome uh, if there is to be a shift in the UK, which we both are not hopeful about. But I would say um, 
I think, again, this idea that we should be openly hostile, not hostile, that's not the right word. What's the right word? Repressive, intolerant. repressively intolerant of Islam in the United Kingdom. Do you think that we would be a happier and better country, or do you think that we just are becoming uh, what we are accused of being, which is like Germany with the Jews, got to get rid of them, and we'll all be a happier nation? Do you think it's a, a, a side hustle, or do you think that what I think, which is that it's a civilizational issue, if we don't deal with Islam? and we don't get on top of it now, before 2029, then we are destining, our, we, we, are, we are leaving our children and grandchildren to be dominated by the Ummah. And the, you know, this is how we're going to live. You're on the wrong path, you decadent Western idiots. And should we, should we actively be campaigning to now on the on this tide to turn around and say i'm sorry we do not tolerate this in our country we don't want it in our country we don't want the way we do not believe what you believe your ideas are entirely antithetical to ours we want you gone yeah i mean it depends if we want to survive or not um if the united kingdom wants to survive as it is then or even improve then it needs to eradicate the toxic death cult that is Islam and get it out of the country. And the whole reason we have barriers up around Westminster and the whole reason we have armed guards at Manchester Christmas festivals, for goodness sake, is because of Mohammedanism. It's it's killing us. At the same time, we're being replaced by it. And so it's, it's, a, it's a choice between life and death. I don't, I don't think that choice is going to be taken. But uh, the only way to save Britain is to remove Islam. Um, so how how would let's see what how happens. would Ron do that? I mean, I would say number one, bearing in mind that this horrible little vile piece of shit who stabbed this poor nurse who no one ever talks about, it's not she's not in the newspapers, is, it? Um, is that he was here illegally, and uh, hotels are being taken over by illegal people is to just have a very commonsensical approach, which is say you arrived in the country illegally, you should be removed immediately. Like you've got to be removed. I know no political party will do that, but a, but a movement of people, as we saw on um, Sky News, who tried to, tried to sort of make everyone seem like they were nutcases, who called a meeting and said that we cannot have a 300 person hotel filled with 300 men in our town in Altrincham with two girls schools here with a large Jewish community. We just, it just doesn't work. And the Trump thing, which I'm so inspired by is the common sense of what Trump speaks, which is I, I, I have no other solution, but go, be gone, leave. If we want to colonize, go and colonize to say, look. another country. Do not colonize my country. I do. I owe it to my children for you not to put them in bin bags. Sure, but I mean, the, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is a Christian country, and we have to say Britain is for the British. Nobody wants to say that, so nothing's going to change. Unfortunately, we can talk about it all day. Okay, but then, <laughs> but then, where does one, where does one sit with the with the ethno nationalists? Because they they seem to be getting you know the, their arguments seem to be resonating with people. Like every time I come out uh, as a civic nationalist, I get piled on by our own side. I mean, I don't particularly engage with it but I get piled on hugely by going you're an idiot you don't understand if they've got any if they've got one drop of brown in them they've got to go and I just don't think that's the answer either so what is what is the answer to protect your culture other than to obviously need to remove Islam but how do we deal with the with the with the people that are already here there has to be some some kind of compromise between the civic nats and the ethno nats there has to be some some kind of agreement that the two can come to but uh, it's all neither here nor there it's just you and i talking on a podcast none of it's going to happen well actually it does happen because if you think about the Everton window it shifted drastically since i started engaging in this field everything is different major victories have been won. I'm not claiming any credit for those, but just being able to speak about it 
is really, really important. You said earlier about Joe Rogan and all that sort of stuff. The fact that someone can sit down and speak to someone for three hours and just find out about who they are as a person, you there are so many tells in a human being that I think we're entering a world where we really are going back to content of character over colour of skin or ideology or you know ethnic breakdown or, or, or any of those things. So I'm really I'm actually very excited that one one could push Kemi, a generic can push Kemi. Other people can push Kemi. There's lots of things that one can do to go, you can be confident to say this stuff and you're not going to be, you're going to be hated by the media, but you're not going to be hated by the people. Do you think she's got it in her? Let's see. Keep talking to us, see what you can get. Um, I think it, I'm very excited about what's going to happen in the West because of President Trump. And I think America has crossed has reached that cross point and chose the at the turning point and chose the right path i think perhaps the uk reached that turning point that chose the wrong path i don't know how we make a u-turn in the uk unfortunately but keep at it um keep nudging her see what happens oh cal you're nothing if not a realist are you <laughs> so um how do you so how do you feel now that you're more embedded in, you're more settled in? I know she got an American flag, but not a British one. Um, how do you feel now? <laughs> this came with the offer. I'm sure. Because <laughs> they love it. I've got, they do. This is it. My, none, none of my churches in the UK would have come with a, with a United Kingdom flag. It's, it's, um, actually, do, I do have one in storage in the UK. I've also got my county flag. I'll bring them over when I bring my stuff over. But love it. It's great. It just, it, it works, um, you know, in in the UK, we kind of have this snobbery towards America, right? Because we look down on America and on Americans because they are confident in themselves. But actually, Britain has lost that confidence and they, Britain could learn a thing or two from America and Americans in that, in that self-confidence in the state and it, co collectively in the people and in the culture and the ideas. Like, we know what the American dream is. What's the British dream? What, like, what do, who are we as a people? What do we want to become? Well, I think it's not what do we want to become, it's what do we want to recome. You know, it's like what 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 do we want to remember about ourselves that was wonderful? You know, my mother yeah. used to say frequently, she used to say that um whenever she was confronted with a Keir Starmer type person, she would say they only they're only interested in power they they don't care about you as a person they care about power and control and once they get power and control it corrupts yeah. them and then they become dreadful and awful people so the common sense approach is to turn around and go on an all-out attack on every unhopeful despairing idea that is offered in front of us like mutilating children or killing the unborn part of me feels that i know it wouldn't go down well because people have been brainwashed so badly but to declare an all-out war on infanticide to say it's it you know bring in a national abortion ban I, I i cannot believe that in this country you can be arrested for trying to pray for the life of a child who is about to be murdered by a woman i can't believe it I, 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 th this Trump thing has completely opened the book for me. I'm just like, how fucking dare you? A murder well, the I, child, I think, look, but a murder the child. In the in the short term, over the next couple of years, we'll see a pushback, a massive pushback over here in favour of common sense against wokeness and against death. We won't necessarily see a pushback against Mohammedanism, I don't think, unfortunately, but we will see against against Marxism. So we'll see one of those two prongs at least be attacked. And then that will set an example for the rest of the West. So I don't think much is going to change back home until we see the fruits of it out here. Once we see what President Trump is able to do in America, other countries will finally be able to say we can do it too. And so hopefully by that time, Kemi Badnock will have gained some strength and some popularity and potentially be able to win an election and turn things right. Who knows? <coughs> Well, who knows in terms of what <coughs> what reform we're going to do? Because Farage has said that Trump must work with Starmer, and I'm like, no, 
don't work with Starmer, ostracize him. Do what Victor Orban did. Did you see what Victor Orban did? Um, when he was greeting the European leaders. Oh yeah, but he didn't he didn't wait to he shake just, Starmer's he's hand. He's just like, I don't care about you, mate. I couldn't give a shit about yeah. you or anything you have to say. Um you are you are the past. And I suppose on the longer term level, what one really wants to see is the UK believe young people born and raised in this country of whatever melanin number to want to reproduce again, to want to create another generation. Because I think this this despair that's been infused into us, this satanic despair uh, of the hatred of life, we need to reverse that. That's one of the most important things to reverse in my mind. It's like, it couldn't be worse when a population yeah. is not replacing itself and we're going to become as advanced as an Islamic country. But, but this is one area that ethno nuts are right. It's not a case of whatever melanin. It does matter. It does make a difference. We need white Britons to breed. Otherwise, they will be re entirely replaced and there'll be no such thing as Britain as we knew it, as it has always been. And I say this as someone who has of mixed race heritage. Like it's important for white Britons to exist. I wouldn't mind if uh, it's not. I would if you put a gun to my head and you said, "Do you want the values and traditions and history of Britain to be protected, or does it have to be done by and it has to be done by white people?" I would go. I don't care who it's done by. I care that it's like obviously I don't want someone who's just got hopped off a boat from Afghanistan. Well, that's a false dichotomy. Like it's not either or. You can't have both. Like why does why does the why does Britain have to become beige? There's nothing wrong with having a multi ethnic society with a with a small minority of people that aren't white British. But Britain should be British. Like England should be English predominantly. Well, hang on. You have to define just as America should be American predominantly. Jap Japan should be Japanese predominantly. China should be Chinese. Yeah, predominantly. but it's not to say you can't have. A minority, but the minority can't be the majority. Otherwise, it's no longer the place. Well, hang on. Uh, America has um, huge amounts of uh, Hispanic immigration into America in the same way that Spain does, yeah. you know, ha had a lot of Islamic immigration, which sort of... And this is why the border needs controlling. Yeah, the border needs controlling. Anyway, um, what, does your, what does your week hold for you this coming week? How's your congregation? Good, really good. We uh, doubled in number in the last month, which is fantastic to see. Uh, lots of good faithful people turning up. Um, next week, I'm going down to Seattle to film something with Doug Wilson, which should be interesting. What, who's uh, Doug Wilson? Tomorrow, I'm going out for fishing. He's, um, he's a theologian. He's a pastor. Tomorrow, I'm going out for fish and chips with some parishioners, which will be very good. Let's see what the Americans can do in terms of fish and chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What nice. are you doing next week? Um, next week, we're having our engagement party. Thanks for not coming. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry about that. I genuinely am sorry about that. But you hosted it while I'm out of the country, so what can I do? Yeah, exactly. So um, we're going to do lots. that. I'm going to try and make these cameras I'll get work. A report back. I'm going to try and get the... That's the, Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to try and get the cameras to work. Mm. Uh, and a lot of naysayers have been messaging me this week saying, oh, I see what you mean now, Calvin. You made the right choice. Like, you made the right decision. It makes sense now. You know, a lot of people who were not necessarily the most positive about me moving over here have kind of figured it figured it all out now. So. I know, but you're a trendsetter, aren't you? You see. Now, as we come to the end of the show, I did promise you that we had a new uh, sponsor. Yes sponsoring the Fox and Fathers show because apparently this uh, company, Gold Bullion Partners, mm. a few of our listeners have decided that uh, while being faced with the tyranny of potential digital IDs and CBDCs mm. and, and what, where they can keep their money safely without it being removed from the government, they've come up with the idea of gold. Well, this is actually silver. Well, I've got some gold. I've got yeah. some gold too. <laughs> I, but my gold's a, a little one. Well, so... The problem is your money isn't yours if it's in the bank and you can't rely on it, you can't trust the banks. So we've, we've got to invest in assets. No capital gains tax. That's interesting. No capital gains tax. I've got a lot of friends who are buying gold and silver, actually. Yeah, non-traceable. I'm, I'm buying silver because gold's a bit up there for me at the moment. I could probably get one of these. But um, this is legal tender. 
Is it? Yeah. Okay. You could. I it, wouldn't want to spend it though. No, I'm just saying. If, well, the, a lot of places aren't accepting legal tender anymore, and that's part of the problem. That the more we go to a cashless society, the more the government can c- control everything that we do. They can see every penny we spend. They can control where we spend it. That's not a good thing. But gold and silver are holding their values beautifully in Absolutely. the world, and in times of trouble, people tend to lean and go towards gold, gold and silver. So, uh, you know. Gold Bullion Partners, guys. The link will be in the sh- in the show notes. And um, if you so feel that yes. you want to... Absolutely. Do your own research. Look into it. Yeah. And um, we will carry on buying it ourselves, won't we? <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> so, listen, I love you, bro. And I hope you have an amazing weekend. And I'm glad that you've got a congregation that's doubled. And I'm glad that you're there. And I expect to see next week an English flag a Union Jack or just a St George's flag or your county flag it won't be next week that, it's in storage in the United on Kingdom on that side of the picture <laughs> I, yeah we'll see we'll see about All that right. oh listen have, have a really good Tuesday I hope it's a special day and take loads of photographs and, uh, and share them I guys. will alright man I love you you too God Bye. bless